I'm working on scrapbooking photos of my school and university activities, and I have quite a few sports photos. Of course, we are all in uniforms with our school colours, but it is starting to seem so repetitive to just use those pictures, and it is sometimes difficult to find supplies that will work. I wish I had another way to create colour schemes that would still complement these photos. Glitter Girl, can you help? Of course I can. I'm going to go ahead and use some sport related photos for today's layout, but don't turn off just if just because you don't have sporting pictures. I'm pretty sure that this idea will work even if your photos are of something completely different. So of course, no matter what we're scrapping, we could take the color scheme directly from the photos. I could go with the school colors of our uniform. These are photos from my freshman year in high school, so they're a little bit dated. Um, and I could do everything in purple, gold, and white. And I have done layouts with photos from this team in purple, gold, and white. And some of my earliest scrapbooking was purple, gold, and white to document all these pictures I had from cheerleading camp and, and games and things like that. But there does come a time when um, it would be refreshing to do something different. And where my scrapbooking has moved on from all those years, it also feels a little bit more sophisticated to use a slightly different color scheme. But I still want it to be complementary to the photos. I don't want it to, to jar or take your attention away. So I have an idea of something that could help out in this sort of situation, and it's an app. So I'm going to pull this up on my phone. It's called Adobe Capture. And it opens up your camera and creates a color scheme based on what you're pointing the camera at. So I could go to this photo here and it will give me color schemes based on what it's seen and whenever I want to capture one of those then I just take the photo and it brings up a color scheme. So with that one it's really picking up on the skin tones and really dropping out the yellow entirely. And with this one, it keeps the yellow in, but it's also added in a gray and kind of a, a, a really red, rusty brown. The yellow is not like a school color gold, it's more like a mustard. And the purple, likewise, it's more a plum rather than that bright royal purple of school uniforms. Um, and so I have this kind of reddish brown, but also this sort of purpley brown in the middle, and this bluey gray. I'm going to go ahead and try this color scheme, but I need to stop and um, find my supplies that will work with this color scheme. The colors here look very autumn to me, so I think it's going to depend on how I mix these colors and what percentage I use of each one um, in order to create that final look. So I'm going to stop to get my supplies and then go on. But that, the app is that simple. Just take a picture and it gives you a color scheme. So here's my color scheme. And here's my paper that I've chosen. Some of this is, well, pretty much all of this is really old. <laughs> so this is a really old KI Memories. This is a really old Cosmo Cricut. But these were the best color matches I could find. Now this brown wood grain is from American Craft, Craft uh, Campy Trails, which is about six years old. And it has some cream to lighten it up and the brown from that middle um, middle swatch but it has this random green and the way I'm, I'm imagining that I'll use it is to put some other colors on top of those green circles um, so that's what I'm thinking there then a couple yellows Cosmo Cricut and basic gray and then this one I had a really hard time with I didn't have anything really true to this color in my stash so, um, and I, I will say the reason all of these are old is because they were hard, these colors were hard to find <laughs> in my collection. And um, they weren't colors that were in my most recent purchases. Anyway, in this last one, I've taken it a little bit more toward the orange. And I'm thinking maybe these pieces from Simple Story Snap might work. Okay, so at this point I'm going to put this away and start on my layout, um, but I've used that app to pick my colors and it's very different than what I might have chosen with just going by the picture and doing straight school color um, color scheme. I also have the challenge of having multiple photos here, and there's one more here somewhere, and they're all originally 4x6 photos, but I'm going to do some cropping. 
these were taken when I was very young and I have um, originals elsewhere uh, you know, I have a digital copy now they were they were taken on film but I have a digital copy backed up so I don't mind cutting these up um, but I I don't feel like keeping the 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 light leak from the film is going to help so I could cut this off I think this photo where I didn't have a zoom or anything I just had a tiny little point-and-shoot um, you know kid camera really that you don't really know what to look at in this picture so I'm thinking if I crop this down to just the girls in the line that might be more useful this one I think I could lose a little bit from the edges and this one I want to keep most of this but I think I don't I think the the person just here on the side of the frame really detracts and it's a stronger image if I pull it down to just those three. So that's my plan with cropping the images and I need to come up with a plan with where these papers are going to go. I'm starting to have a plan. I cut down the purple one first because it was a 12 by 12 with rounded corners and I knew that I probably wouldn't use the rounded corners, I'd rather have it as a box. So I cut that down and then immediately saw my biggest problem which is that this is a very very different style than this. This is a really graphic and clean and this is that distressed look. And when I put these two next to each other they just were not working even though I really want this color. But if I look at this pattern most of the distressing is around the edge and if I just look at the middle yeah there's a few little scratches but I mostly get pure color in the middle. So I'm not going to use the edges I'm going to cut pieces from the middle and use it as embellishment on the layout. That gave me a plan, so I wasn't going to use the blue as the background. So I looked at this more solid gold, and then the purple on top of this. Again, this has a little bit of distressing, but it's far, far less, and I like the purple on here. Now I could go all the way across here, but this felt a little too rigid to me, and I wanted to work with this maybe off the edge a little bit. And then I liked the idea of the, the three larger photos because they're all basically the same height, I'm going to need to trim one down a little bit more. But to have them in a horizontal line across, use this tiny one in the journaling because it needs a caption to make sense. Where these, I mean, you can tell, yes, there's story behind them, but you can tell the basic deal of these are just happy snapshots for the camera. Where this one needs a little bit of explanation of why on earth did I take that picture. And then, title came to me when I was flipping through this little book and looking for what would work with that orange and there's one that says awesome and I'm going to embarrass myself in now and say that when I was cheering we did a cheer quite often that went A-W-E-S-O-M-E -E, awesome awesome totally so why don't I just go ahead and use that as my title because as soon as I saw that that's what came into my head and it's something that is it's clearly cheers are just stuck in my head forevermore. So I might as well go ahead and embrace it on this page. So that's going to bring in this orange, which is a color that I wouldn't have chosen for this, but it's now a happy little thing that it matches. It makes for a good title. That means I'm going to bring in this blue for embellishment. So maybe I can make an embellishment column with my title that's going to go down here so that I'll have a, a vertical column or, yeah, a vertical column, a horizontal row. Um, and I still have this brown that I wanted to bring in with, with circles on top. And I'm not quite sure where that's going to go at this point in time. But that's okay. I've also got another yellow that I could put on top of the purple. So it's all... You can see that there's not a, a huge plan, but it's enough for me to start. So that's where I'm going to go. Okay, because this purple is more graphic than the other patterns I've chosen, I'm going to add a bit of ink, brown ink, to the edges, just in hopes of making it just slightly softer. I don't think it's going to show all that much now that I see it, but... Sometimes a little bit goes a long way when it comes to all things visual, so I don't think it's going to hurt to have that little bit of looking. Okay. And then this one is going to run off the bottom of the page, or off the right of the page.
I have these photos. I think I need to bring these two down a little bit more that direction. I don't want to cut this one down anymore. So yeah, these need to be just a little bit narrower. Um, so if I start from this side, I'm using that line of the pattern paper to line everything up. This one is a, a tiny little bit shorter, but I want to add a mat that will make it the same height. So I'm not going to adhere it right now, but I want to use it to place this one, and that's going to tell me I need a little bit more off this side still. And then this one can run off the edge here. And then I'll bring in that blue behind this photo here in the middle. And I just need to make sure that I'm matting from the middle and not this distressed edge. And then my blue pattern in the middle here. And I wanted to place this one on a little bit of an angle. Let's just shake that, that horizontal line. And this extra off the edge. And this one too. And then I can figure out how I can get some journaling space in here that will include this photo. And then my title column here. This journaling card I think will work. So brings in that orange here on the side, which is going to be useful. And I might take off the rainbow color here on the, on the right hand side, I think. I think that will just be too many colors to come in. Yeah, so I'm going to just take off that multicolored stripe on the far side here and leave it with the craft folder tab. Brown ink on the edges of that, and then I think this needs to be tucked behind here, and it needs some dimension at the top but flat at the bottom just so that it feels a little bit more like an actual stack of papers on a desk since that's the look of those little motifs down the side. And then I think if I trim this photo down and attach it to the top with a paper clip, then that should really work with, with the look of those papers there. Um, so now I need to find a paper clip. I feel like this, this, this process of scrapbooking by choosing that color scheme or letting, it, letting the app choose the color scheme for me and then working from those decisions rather than what's in my head, it's changing the order that I do things. So every single step I'm going to have to stop and go find something rather than how I tend to have about 75% of my supplies ready to go when I start a layout um, because that's just my process. I gather first and then I start creating. This is kind of changing it up. So you might find that if you are choosing a color scheme that's a little bit different, it changes your steps as well. I really hoped that I could find a colored paper clip in one of the colors here um, and I'm sure as soon as I finish the layout I'll probably find one but instead I have black and I think this particular one is going to look a little bit better if I pick it up so that you see a little bit more of the clip at the top and then this photo still needs oh well I've just done that completely backward this photo is still going to need adhesive, is what I was going to say. But then I've already adhered the paper clip to the picture, so that wasn't wasn't my best logic. Okay, so I'll be able to journal here. Um, I'm going to need some yellow in there, but I'll get there in a second. And maybe this is where that stripe needs to come in. I think what I'd like to do is cut several different papers so they're the same width as this title, including this one and the blue, 
and then I'll use those to build that vertical column. My title's going to be tucked in here, and then I thought I could work from there. I'm going to do little angles here. So I think, let's see, I won't take right at the bottom because that has a little bit more distressed edge. And the one, this side is that more um, true blue, but I'm going to use the little cloud side. Pop that one there. I've already got the blue here. And I wanted this to overlap, so it doesn't matter that I just completely made the top of that not straight because it's going to run off the top of the page. have a bit more of that down here and again it's going to run off the edge Then I need to find a circle punch that will work with this, or a circle die, or something to trace, or something, and I think I'll start cutting some from this yellow pattern and putting that over the top before I add anything else, because I'm worried that if I get carried away with other things, that then when I come back to these circles, it will be too much. So I'd rather get those true to how they're going to look now, and then add some more things behind here. Okay, this small Fiskars circle punch is the right size to cover the little green circle but leave the cream around the edge. So I'm going to do a bunch from this paper and then also some little blue clouds because I've used the blue up at the top and I've used it in this frame but I haven't used it at the bottom of this column. So I think the way to bring it into the into the bottom of this column is to use it in the circles rather than another box. So let's have some blue cloud circles too. Okay. Then the blue I'm not going to ink because I'm not a big fan of the brown on blue. I feel like it distorts the color too much and picks up a strange little greenish hue. But I am going to add it to the yellow ones. Now, it's easy for me to do the ones that go off the bottom of the page because I'm just going to put full circles on there and then I'll cut all of this off together to make it flush with the bottom of the page. But these pieces I'll need to do as I go. So I'm going to put this one down and then just show you simple, simple how I'm going to do that. And it is just with my scissors, have a look at the placement and then figure out where it needs to be trimmed. Adhesive on just that tiny piece. And if I've made it too big, which I have, look, if I line up the edges now, I've lost way too much of the cream. So I just need to cut it back again. Okay, spots all covered, so I can just take off those edges. And then what I thought I would do next is come back to this title block. I started with the idea that I would leave a gap here, but I'm not really loving it, and I'm feeling like this title block is getting lost already. So I'm going to take it off for a moment and cut a box 
box to go around it from this yellow pattern. And this way I should be able to tuck this behind here and not have a gap between the gold and the blue there. Replace this orange block behind here. Maybe that's easier to read if I have it up high enough that you can see the bottom of the E. I just lost one of these, I flicked it across the table. Okay, let's put that back. Okay. I'm going to add my journaling next and then come back with embellishment. Again, this is having to stop and go find things. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what embellishments I'm going to use, but I can see places on the page that I want embellishment. And in fact, right now I'm thinking I need to move this over because in my head I'm looking at this purple gap and I'm not liking it. I want to bring these two together. And my first thought was to do that with embellishments, but then I look at how much embellishment I would have to put there and it's not going to work with the title. So I'm going to bring this whole box over. Oh, which included pop dots, whoops. So it's a little bit more stuck. Okay, I'm going to bring this over to here. And then I'll be able to have embellishment that will go opposite. So if I embellish here, and I embellish here, and then I have some embellishment over here in this empty space, then I'm going to have a nice triangle that doesn't intrude on my title, my journaling, and my photos. The good news is that the journaling fits. I've done bullet pointed memories of things that apply to these photos so that I didn't just rehash the same journaling I have in my albums already with other photos from the same event, um, which was all kind of longer lists and paragraph type things. So um, I'm happy with that. What I'm not happy with is this yellow in the background. And I'm going to take it all apart. Yeah, what I'm going to do is um, is keep the yellow as this accent instead of this big overwhelming piece in the background. It means that I'm not changing from that original color scheme, but what I felt at the beginning when I said I looked at that color scheme and it felt very autumn-y and it, it's feeling autumn, it's also to me feeling very retro as in 70s, not 90s. I'm not for any instance making uh, any any guess that these photos are are new they are very very old but they're not 70s old they're 90s old and these colors to me don't feel like 90s so I am going to go with something a little bit more neutral and I've just pulled up um, a piece of cream and white wood grain from my first collection and I just think that will be a cleaner background so Scary time. I'm going to take it all off. Do, 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 do. Now, with the purple underneath there, this is all going to be easy. Okay, that's all intact. And I just have those pieces at the top. So I'm going to pull these off together. And the yellow can go to the scrap bin. Um, I'm sure something will work out with that, but it's not going to be this background. Okay. Just make sure that there's enough that that's still going to stick fine. And get this all lined up. So that one needs to be at the edge. This needs to be at the bottom edge. That should leave me flush with the purple on this side, in theory. We'll get there. I'm going to be lining this purple side up first. Okay. And that just feels so much lighter and far less, um, less 70s to me. Okay. I do want to have more of the purple. And the purple that I found when I was looking for pattern paper, the 
There was a purple in one collection that worked really well, but the pattern I had left didn't fit the theme at all. The only pattern I had left was this cityscape, and that didn't go. So now that I'm thinking about embellishments, I realize I have embellishments from that same line, so it means I can come get that purple. So this is Second City um, by Basic Gray with Kelly Perky, and I have the chipboard, and I have these uh, this 12 by 12 sticker sheet. I want to do some embellishment on the little circles and and that cloud space there so that I have some embellishment that connects the top to the title and then some embellishment here and some embellishment here so that's my triangle above and below the title and over to the side. So now I'm just going to go through and see what I can find that has that purple. There's also gold, like yellow gold in this. So I might have some options there. And since I have both chipboard and the flat stickers, it gives me a bit of variety in texture and dimension. We'll see what will work. I've cut three of these circles from the border sticker into just some wobbly, wobbly circles and, and put some pop dots on the back. And I'm thinking this could work really well to have this kind of um, scattered effect down this column so that there's that little bit of purple that brings your eye um, down the vertical. And in the chipboard, I was not I was really only looking for things that are purple, and then I noticed this. Um, so that whole thing with the title being awesome, awesome, totally, and this chipboard piece says totally in the same orange that the awesome is there. So I'm going to use that, and there's this little bit of turquoise there that picks up on this little bit of turquoise here, even though I hadn't really intended to bring turquoise into the color scheme. So that's going to be added to my title, and if I can get the backing off, there we go. And I originally, when I, when I picked out that paper with the circles and the wood grain, this paper, I had thought that I would center all the embellishments within the circle, and then I realized I, I like it a little bit more off-centered. Just gives it a bit more movement, it makes it feel less formal. These photos are definitely not formal in any way, so that suits my story that I want to tell here. One down here at the bottom. Now, I also toyed with this piece of chipboard, which I quite like there in a way. But it's also really big. And I'm not so sure about this space here. I feel like there needs to be something in there because right now you can see where this piece ends. And maybe I should have left this one so slightly bigger so that it just went underneath, but I'd left the gap here, so I was going to leave a gap here. But if I put something like that, that's just way too much on top of the photo. This chipboard piece is too much like those three to work there. So what if I use some gems? I have these three really sparkly purple gems. And I'm thinking they could also form a little bit of a vertical uh, visual path here. So maybe I need to bring one into the title. This does look a little bit not attached to anything. <laughs> oh, it was a novel idea. Maybe my answer is to do something that's this sort of tab that could go on here. I've got a yellow one. Do I have any purple tabs? No, but I've got this yellow one. Would that work? Not be too big. I could put their names on it or something like that. And then I think, I think I'm going to keep adding more. <laughs> I'm going to add some enamel dots. I was just looking, I think that warmer purple 
And the reason I've gone to this is because I have all these circles and I just want to really emphasize that circle shape that's repeating. I think these two, I'm going to place them really close together. tiny ones into the title. behind it and oh, torn paper so it's not showing okay so <laughs> did I use this cool colors yes but not in the same way that I would have if I had just set out with the goal of using the school colors. I've stayed um, a little bit off those bright, bright, clean colors that you get in school uniforms and, and sport uniforms and things like that, and brought in the cream to go with the skin tones and the age of the photos rather than the bright, bright white. Um, and then brought in this random orange that came from the app picking it up and it's probably picked it up from this door frame or maybe even the skin tone I don't know um, but that app does give me color combinations that I wouldn't expect and sometimes that's exactly what I need to change it up and be able to do something a little different and, and unexpected the worst thing that could happen I get all of the colors arranged on my desk and decided I don't like it and I put them away and start again. That's not the end of the world. So it's uh, worth a shot. See if you um, have any luck by taking a photo of your photo and pulling up the color scheme that it suggests. And apply it to your supplies and see how you go. Thanks so much for watching. I'd love to see what you're making. You can share it with us anytime at our Facebook group, Scrapbook Like a Superhero. And you can check out a weekly challenge unrelated to Glitter Girls videos every Monday at Chamel.com. See you soon.